Today on our channel, Survive and Thrive, I wanted to talk about one of the biggest cryptos out there, Ethereum, also known as ETH. Jumping right into this first article, what is Ethereum and why is the price going down? I won't focus as much on the first question or part of this statement, but I do really want to focus on those who have been following the crypto space and talk a lot about what's happening with the valuation of Ethereum in particular and why it might be a good time given the recent news, upcoming catalysts, and where this crypto project is headed to potentially get involved and start a holdings or increase your position by buying the dip. Taking a quick look at the numbers, as of Friday, Ethereum was trading at 2,500 or just above that, according to CoinMarketCap, which is down around 5% in the last 24 hours and around 3% over the past week. Ethereum had hit an all-time high of 4,300 on May 12, just a few weeks ago, which is now a decrease of about 40% since that time. For those of you that aren't familiar, Ethereum has been around since 2015, and it's the second largest market cap after Bitcoin. So a very well-known crypto project or coin out there. And as we'll see here further in the video, I see a lot of positive news for the future. And this is a very good time to really get involved or increase your support for a project that's going to be around for a very long time and make some significant changes to the way that we do business and handle financing on not only a local but global scale. I wanna take a minute on the CNN Business website and talk about Vitalik Buterin, who is the founder of Ethereum, and why he isn't surprised right now by the current crypto crash. It feels like crypto is clo like close to ready for the mainstream in a way that it wasn't even four years ago. Welcome and then Vitalik Buterin, who is the co-creator and inventor of Ethereum. Ethereum, what is very interesting, it is overshadowing the rise in Bitcoin, which is also dramatic. When you combine the two, they make up about two-thirds of all the market value of every cryptocurrency in the world. So do you remember uh, where you were when you found out uh, that you were a, a cryptocurrency billionaire? And it was definitely like one of the many signs that I saw around the same time that, you know, crypto isn't just a toy anymore. It's a yeah, significant part of this new world that's being created. Uh, and, you know, that just means that we... As Vitalik states here, it's definitely something that's become more mainstream and gotten a lot of media attention. As you can see, he's doing an interview here on CNN Business. So that's pretty significant. But all the while, with it being the second largest just after Bitcoin for market cap of all cryptos, it just goes to show you that this is really one of those projects that's going to be around for the future. And there are some analysts and people who have high conviction with crypto that think that Ethereum actually could take over Bitcoin at some point in time. You know, we have to level up and we have to like really continue working hard at uh, turning uh, crypto into something that can be really good and valuable for humanity. Let's talk about Elon Musk because he's mm. able to send out tweets, uh, even just an appearance on SNL can move mm. entire cryptocurrencies. Well, uh, what is it, man? <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you, it's a cryptocurrency you can trade for conventional money. Oh, so it's a hustle. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> but, you know, Elon Musk tweeting is something that the crypto space has only been introduced to for the first time, like literally, you know, last year and this year. Uh, so, um, you know, I think it's reasonable to expect a bit of craziness, but uh, oh, I, I do think that the markets will learn that, you know, Elon is not going to uh, have this influence forever. And I definitely have seen other articles and statements from Vit Vitalik in regards to Elon Musk and his influence over the crypto movement. And as he stated, within just the last few years, Elon Musk has been able to 
post his tweets and have the valuations of crypto increase or decrease depending on what statement he makes that day. But over the long term, I don't think that he will have that influence, especially as people start to realize what value these projects really have and how they can infiltrate and help with decentralized financing, as well as many other uses for how these coins can help to validate transaction and use blockchain to really leverage this technology for the future of mankind as Vitalik states. So it's really a strong conviction for me. And while I don't have a huge percentage of my portfolio tied up in crypto, I've got about 10 to 15% currently. I do think that the projects that I focus on, I really try to do a lot of research and make sure that they're well understood so that I'm in alignment of the long-term vision and then just continue to increase my position. And even in these times when it seems that there's a lot of volatility, which there is because relative to a lot of other businesses or projects out there, they are new. And so there is going to be a lot of up and down movement because there's really no earnings or real product to compare the valuation to other than supply and demand. And so until there's a real use application that is on the mass adoption level, then this crypto as well as others will continue to be volatile. <music>
and moved back above that level in April. It then soared to its record high, or ATH all-time high, of 43.80 on May 12, 2021, a gain of 500% from the start of the year. So that really just goes to show you how quickly this crypto can move. And as I mentioned before, the volatility of this is going to continue to peak and valley until there is stabilization with the mass adoption and number of use cases for how this crypto as well as others are used. And so in my mind, if I'm a long-term buyer and holder, which I am, I just see these opportunities that every time that it dips, it's another time for me to increase my position at a lower dollar cost average basis. Definitely do your own research. Really take time to understand how this company operates or how these crypto projects operate and what level of comfort you have as far as how much you want to invest. Obviously, you're not gonna put money in that you're not willing to lose. But I do think that as time goes on, I have more of a confidence level of how these cryptos are going to be integrated into our system. And you can see it was mentioned in that interview about non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and how everything from trading cards to art to even YouTube videos are being invested into or owned by purchasing these NFTs so that you can have ownership in a piece of artwork or trading cards or video and not necessarily have to have full ownership of that piece. I do see there are a lot of uses already happening and I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future as this technology develops. Finishing up on the information that I wanted to cover for this video, I wanted to touch on Ethereum 2.0, which is the transition from proof of work to proof of stake, and how this is going to be a green or less energy consumption method, scalable and far more efficient. Quickly touching on this, so it mentions energy consumption by cryptocurrencies has been a cause for alarm and has prompted global outrage amid concerns of climate change. And we've heard all of the issues between China mining for Bitcoin and even Elon Musk making statements about not allowing Bitcoin to be used as payments any longer for Tesla and even rumored to have sold off some of his Bitcoin. So this combined with the current administration really having a big, huge focus on green technology and having a focus on energy conservation, it's great to see that Ethereum really is taking this seriously and making the changes necessary to make this crypto a more energy efficient coin. How will the new Ethereum blockchain change? As I mentioned, Ethereum 2.0 is a shift to proof of stake from proof of work. Bitcoin leverages the latter and is very energy intensive as it takes many computers to compete against each other to process transactions and get these rewards. On the flip side, the participants in proof of stake or POS are called validators instead of miners. Every validator has to put up a stake as collateral and in return, the stakers are rewarded with Ether for their efforts. This actually is collected as passive income and payouts are received over time. Within the last few weeks, I noticed that I was able to actually convert or stake all of my Ethereum to ETH 2.0. So I actually moved all of it. And within Coinbase, you actually get a 6% APY. So that's a great return, especially when you compare it to what the banks are currently offering for high yield accounts even, just given that the federal interest rates are so low. And if you're looking for a way to buy Ethereum and you don't have current holdings, or if you'd like to spread out the number of exchanges that you're currently investing your crypto into, Coinbase is a great option. I will put a referral link and for every $100 of Bitcoin, you get $10 free and I get a match with the affiliate link.
Now, as it states here, the new process is far more energy efficient since the complexity of the cryptographic work is lower. Each node is responsible for staking its currency to participate in the process. Instead of millions of processors going after the same transaction, POS randomly assigns one for the job. A minimum of 32 Ether is required for a user to stake on the new network. So what's great about Coinbase is that you actually don't have to have 32 ETH. You can have any amount. You can have a fraction of a coin or a whole coin, and you'll still get that 6% APY. So definitely something to take advantage of and really create that passive income option for yourself. A green cryptocurrency designed for the future? Researchers say that energy consumption could drop massively to one ten hundred thousandth of the current requirement. For reference, Bitcoin requires 707 kilowatts of electricity, while Ethereum comes out to 62.56 kilowatts. So in contrast, Ethereum 2.0 will be much, much more efficient. I think that with these transitions, with ETH 2.0, Vitalik really wanting to have a substantial change or evolution with mankind, that there is a lot of upside. And based on the current price, it's time to buy. And I would try and buy dollar cost average because the volatility just moves up and down so quickly. So there's just no great way to time this. But I would build your position because at the end of the day, I do see that ETH has a very bright future and will be one of the top contenders, if not the top, when it's all said and done. If you have thoughts or comments about Ethereum ETH 2.0, definitely leave those below so we can all collectively discuss these. And I really like to see those that are excited about this project and really have a strong conviction, as I do. Until next time, don't just survive, thrive!